I am working through the electrolysis section of the 2019 chemistry paper, which starts with question 1.9 in multiple choice, which reads as follows. In an electrolytic cell, the anode is the positive electrode, and we can stop right there because we know that in a galvanic cell, the cathode is the positive electrode, and that is the change that happens between an electrolytic and a galvanic cell when it is no longer spontaneous is that the anode now becomes the positive electrode. So the correct answer to question 1.9 is option A. The remaining question on electrolysis is always going to be question 9 in this paper, which reads as follows. Chlorine is produced industrially by the electrolysis of a concentrated sodium chloride solution, NaCl. The balanced equation for the net or overall cell reaction is as follows. Important to see here that they have specified that this is aqueous NaCl, uh, again highlighted by the presence of water here. Question 9.1 define the term electrolysis, the definition as given in the guideline document, it is the chemical process in which electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. Question 9.2. For the above reaction, write down the half reaction that takes place at the cathode. And so it always helps to draw a diagram here, where here we have a solution that is going to contain sodium ions, it is going to contain chlorine ions, and it is going to contain water molecules. We know that this is going to be have two electrodes inserted into it. Those electrodes are connected to a cell or a battery, and we know that the positive terminal of the battery is the longer one, which makes this our positive electrode, and this the negative electrode. Now, there are a number of possible half reactions that can take place here. The first one is that we can see that if we're starting with chlorine ions and ending with chlorine gas, then the only possible half reaction that can be happening there is going to be the oxidation of chlorine, which we can write out as oxidation, where we start out with two chlorine ions, and those then are oxidized, meaning they lose electrons to form chlorine gas, and then give off those two electrons. That then leaves the possibility for our sodium ions, which we know are going to be attracted to the negative terminal. Those sodium ions can potentially undergo reduction. This is a possible reduction half reaction where we have a sodium ion that is positively charged that gains a single electron to become sodium solid. But it's important to remember that there is also water present and the water reaction that we are always going to be dealing with, the water half reaction specifically, that we will find on this table of standard reduction potentials, is always going to be this reaction. There are a number of reactions that include water, but at this level we only deal with water that undergoes reduction to give off hydrogen gas and hydroxide. And so we can write that down as a potential half reaction that's going to take place, that is water that gains two electrons to form hydrogen gas and two hydroxide ions. Now, the problem that we are faced with here is that we have two possible reduction half reactions and the way that we determine which of those is more likely to happen is by comparing them to each other on this table. So here we have our sodium half reaction and what we can see is that as we move down the table we increase the oxidizing ability, which also means we increase the ability to be reduced, meaning that the further down the table, the more likely a substance is to be reduced. And so we say since water is below sodium on this table, since water is below sodium on this table, note here that this is table 4b, since water is below sodium on this table, water is more likely to be reduced or more likely to be the oxidizing agent and as a result we say that the reduction half reaction is going to be the reduction of water. Now we can get back to the question. The question which says write down the half reaction that takes place at the cathode 
and we know that reduction always occurs at the cathode, which means that the half reaction that takes place here is the reduction of water, that is 2H2O in liquid form, that gains two electrons in order to form hydrogen gas and two hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. Question 9.2.2, write down the name or the formula of the oxidizing agent. Now, we can see that the chlorine ions undergo oxidation. They are oxidized, meaning they give off electrons. That oxidation is only possible because we have water that is willing to accept those electrons. So we say that water, by being reduced, makes oxidation possible. And so we say that our water molecule, H2O, is the oxidizing agent. Finally, question 9.3. Refer to the table of standard reduction potentials to explain why sodium ions are not reduced during this process. And as we have explained here, because H2O has a stronger oxidizing ability, as we said, the water molecule is lower down on the table, therefore its oxidizing ability is higher. Because water has a stronger oxidizing ability than sodium, it will be more easily reduced. Because it is a better oxidizing agent, it will be more easily reduced.